Chapter Ten, Section Four of Capital, Volume One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anna Simon. Capital, a critical analysis of capitalist production, Volume One by Karl Marx. Translated from the third German edition by Samuel Moore and Edward Aveling, and edited by Frederick Engels. Part Three, The Production of Absolute Surplus Value, Chapter Ten, The Working Day, Section Four, Day and Night Work, The Relay System. Constant capital, the means of production, considered from the standpoint of the creation of surplus value, only exists to absorb labor and with every drop of labor a proportional quantity of surplus labor. While they fail to do this, their mere existence causes a relative loss to the capitalist, for they represent, during the time they lie fallow, a useless advance of capital. And this loss becomes positive and absolute as soon as the intermission of their employment necessitates additional outlay at the recommencement of work. The prolongation of the working day beyond the limits of the natural day into the night only acts as a palliative. It quenches only in a slight degree the vampire thirst for the living blood of labor. To appropriate labor during all the twenty-four hours of the day is, therefore, the inherent tendency of capitalist production. But as it is physically impossible to exploit the same individual labor power constantly during the night as well as the day, to overcome this physical hindrance, an alternation becomes necessary between the workpeople whose powers are exhausted by day and those who are used up by night. This alternation may be effected in various ways, e.g., it may be so arranged that part of the workers are one week employed on day work, the next week on night work. It is well known that this relay system, this alternation of two sets of workers, held full sway in the full-blooded youth time of the English cotton manufacturer, and that at the present time it still flourishes, among others, in the cotton spinning of the Moscow district. This twenty-four hours process of production exists today as a system in many of the branches of industry of Great Britain that are still free. In the blast furnaces, forges, plate-rolling mills, and other metallurgical establishments in England, Wales, and Scotland, the working time here includes, besides the twenty-four hours of the six working days, a great part also of the twenty-four hours of Sunday. The workers consist of men and women, adults and children of both sexes. The ages of the children and young persons run through all intermediate grades, from eight, in some cases from six, to eighteen. Footnote Children's Employment Commission, Third Report, London, 1864, pages Roman 4, 5, and 6, and a footnote. In some branches of industry, the girls and women work through the night together with the males. Footnote. Both in Staffordshire and in South Wales, young girls and women are employed on the pit banks and on the coke heaps, not only by day but also by night. This practice has been often noticed in reports presented to Parliament as being attended with great and notorious evils. These females employed with the men, hardly distinguished from them in their dress, and begrimed with dirt and smoke, are exposed to the deterioration of character arising from the loss of self-respect, which can hardly fail to follow from their unfeminine occupation. Loco Citato, 194, page Roman 26 conform fourth report eighteen sixty five sixty one page roman thirteen it is the same in glass works and a footnote placing on one side the generally injurious influence of night labor the duration of the process of production unbroken during the twenty four hours offers very welcome opportunities of exceeding the limits of the normal working day e.g. in the branches of industry already mentioned which are of an exceedingly fatiguing nature the official working day means for each worker usually twelve hours by night or day. Footnote. A steel manufacturer who employs children in night labor remarked, It seems but natural that boys who work at night cannot sleep and get proper rest by day, but will be running about. Loco citato. 
fourth report sixty three page roman thirteen on the importance of sunlight for the maintenance and growth of the body a physician writes light also acts upon the tissues of the body directly in hardening them and supporting their elasticity the muscles of animals when they are deprived of a proper amount of light become soft and inelastic the nervous power loses its tone from defective stimulation and the elaboration of all growth seems to be perverted in the case of children constant access to plenty of light during the day and to the direct rays of the sun for a part of it is most essential to health light assists in the elaboration of good plastic blood and hardens the fibre after it has been laid down it also acts as a stimulus upon the organs of sight and by this means brings about more activity in the various cerebral functions dr w strange senior physician of the worcester general hospital from whose work on health eighteen sixty four this passage is taken writes in a letter to mr white one of the commissioners i have had opportunities formerly when in lancashire of observing the effects of night work upon children and i have no hesitation in saying contrary to what some employers were fond of asserting those children who were subjected to it soon suffered in their health loco citato two hundred eighty four page fifty five that such a question should furnish the material of serious controversy shows plainly how capitalist production acts on the brain functions of capitalists and their retainers and a footnote but the overwork beyond this amount is in many cases to use the words of the english official report truly fearful footnote loco citato fifty seven page roman twelve and a footnote it is impossible the report continues for any mind to realize the amount of work described in the following passages as being performed by boys of from nine to twelve years of age without coming irresistibly to the conclusion that such abuses of the power of parents and of employers can no longer be allowed to exist footnote loco citato fourth report eighteen sixty five fifty eight page roman twelve and a footnote Quote, the practice of boys working at all by day and night turns either in the usual course of things or at pressing times seems inevitably to open the door to their not unfrequently working unduly long hours these hours are indeed in some cases not only cruelly but even incredibly long for children amongst a number of boys it will of course not unfrequently happen that one or more are from some cause absent when this happens, their place is made up by one or more boys who work in the other turn. That this is a well-understood system is plain, from the answer of the manager of some large rolling mills, who, when I asked him how the place of the boys absent from their turn was made up, I dare say, sir, you know that as well as I do, and admitted the fact. Footnote, loco citato, and a footnote. Quote, at a rolling mill where the proper hours were from six a m to five and a half p m a boy worked about four nights every week till eight and a half p m at least and this for six months another at nine years old sometimes made three twelve-hour shifts running and when ten has made two days and two nights running a third now ten worked from six a m till twelve p m three nights and till nine p m the other nights another now thirteen worked from six p m till twelve noon next day for a week together and sometimes for three shifts together e g from monday morning till tuesday night another now twelve has worked in an iron foundry at staveley from six a m till twelve p m for a fortnight on end could not do it any more george allensworth age nine came here as cellar boy last friday next morning we had to begin at three so i stopped here all night live five miles off, slept on the floor of the furnace, overhead, with an apron under me and a bit of a jacket over me. The two other days I have been here at six a.m. Aye, it is hot in here. Before I came here I was nearly a year at the same work at some works in the country. Began there, too, at three on Saturday morning. Always did, but was very gain, near, home, and could sleep at home. Other days I began at six in the morning, and gin over at six or seven in the evening." etc. Footnote. Loco citato, page Roman thirteen. 
the degree of culture of these labor powers must naturally be such as appears in the following dialogues with one of the commissioners jeremiah haynes age twelve four times four is eight four fours are sixteen a king is him that has all the money and gold we have a king told it is a queen they call her the princess alexandra told that she married the queen's son the queen's son is the princess alexandra a princess is a man william turner age twelve don't live in england think it is a country but didn't know before john morris age fourteen have heard say that god made the world and that all the people was drowned but one heard say that one was a little bird william smith age fifteen god made man man made woman edward taylor age fifteen do not know of london henry matthewman age seventeen had been to chapel but missed a good many times lately one name that they preached about was jesus christ but i cannot say any others and i cannot tell anything about him he was not killed but died like other people he was not the same as other people in some ways because he was religious in some ways and others isn't loco citato page roman fifteen the devil is a good person i don't know where he lives christ was a wicked man this girl spelled god as dog and did not know the name of the queen children employment commission fifth report eighteen sixty six page fifty five and two hundred seventy eight the same system obtains in the glass and paper works as in the metallurgical already cited in the paper factories where the paper is made by machinery night work is the rule for all processes except rag sorting in some cases night work by relays is carried on incessantly through the whole week usually from sunday night until midnight of the following saturday those who are on day work work five days of twelve and one day of eighteen hours those on night work five nights of twelve and one of six hours in each week in other cases each set works twenty-four hours consecutively on alternate days one set working six hours on monday and eighteen on saturday to make up the twenty-four hours in other cases an intermediate system prevails by which all employed on the paper-making machinery work fifteen or sixteen hours every day in the week this system says commissioner lord seems to combine all the evils of both the twelve hours and the twenty-four hours relays children under thirteen young persons under eighteen and women work under this night system sometimes under the twelve-hour system they are obliged on account of the non-appearance of those that ought to relieve them to work a double turn of twenty-four hours the evidence proves that boys and girls very often work overtime which not infrequently extends to twenty-four or even thirty-six hours of uninterrupted toil in the continuous and unvarying process of glazing are found girls of twelve who work the whole month fourteen hours a day without any regular relief or cessation beyond two or at most three breaks of half an hour each for meals in some mills where regular night work has been entirely given up overwork goes on to a terrible extent and that often in the dirtiest and in the hottest and in the most monotonous of the various processes children's employment commission report four eighteen sixty five page roman thirty eight and roman thirty nine End of footnote. Let us now hear how capital itself regards this twenty-four hour system, the extreme forms of the system, its abuse in the cruel and incredible extension of the working day are naturally passed over in silence. Capital only speaks of the system in its normal form. Messrs. Naylor and Vickers, steel manufacturers, who employ between six hundred and seven hundred persons, among whom only ten per cent are under eighteen and of those only twenty boys under eighteen work in night sets thus express themselves the boys do not suffer from the heat the temperature is probably from eighty six to ninety degrees at the forges and in the rolling mills the hands work night and day in relays but all the other parts of the work are day work i e from six a m to six p m in the forge the hours are from twelve to twelve some of the hands always work in the night without any alternation of day and night work we do not find any difference in the health of those who work regularly by night and those who work by day and probably people can sleep better if they have the same period of rest than if it is changed 
About twenty of the boys under the age of eighteen work in the night sets. We could not well do without lads under eighteen working by night. The objection would be the increase in the cost of production. Skilled hands in the heads in every department are difficult to get, but of lads we could get any number. But from the small portion of boys that we employ, the subject, i.e., of restrictions on night work, is of little importance or interest to us. Footnote. Fourth Report, etc., 1865-79, page Roman 16. End of footnote. Mr. J. Ellis, one of the firm of Messrs. John Brown & Co., Steel and Iron Works, employing about 3,000 men and boys, part of whose operations, namely iron and heavier steel work, goes on night and day by relays, states that in the heavier steel work one or two boys are employed to a score or two men. Their concern employs upwards of 500 boys under 18, of whom about one-third, or 170, are under the age of 13. With reference to the proposed alteration of the law, Mr. Ellis says, I do not think it would be very objectionable to require that no person under the age of 18 should work more than 12 hours under 24. But we do not think that any line could be drawn over the age of 12 at which boys could be dispensed with for night work. But we would sooner be prevented from employing boys under the age of 13 or even so high as 14 at all than not be allowed to employ boys that we do have at night. Those boys who work in the day sets must take their turn in the night sets also, because the men could not work in the night sets only, it would ruin their health. We think, however, that night work in alternate weeks is no harm. Messrs. Naylor and Vickers, on the other hand, in conformity with the interest of their business, considered that periodically changed night labour might possibly do more harm than continual night labour. We find the men who do it as well as the others who do other work only by day. Our objections to not allowing boys under eighteen to work at night would be on account of the increase of expense but this is the only reason. Aside, what cynical naivete. Back to quote, we think that the increase would be more than the trade, with due regard to its being successfully carried out, could fairly bear. Aside, what mealy-mouthed phraseology. Back to quote, labor is scarce here and might fall short if there were such a regulation. Aside, i.e., Alice Brown and Co. might fall into the fatal perplexity of being obliged to pay labor power its full value. Footnote, loco citato, eighty, page Roman sixteen. End of footnote. The Cyclops steel and iron works of Messrs. Camel and Co. are concocted on the same large scale as those of the above mentioned John Brown and Co. The managing director had handed in his evidence to the government commissioner, Mr. White, in writing. Later, he found it convenient to suppress the manuscript when it had been returned to him for revision. Mr. White, however, has a good memory. He remembered quite clearly that for the Messrs. Cyclops, the forbidding of the night labor of children and young persons would be impossible. It would be tantamount to stopping their works." and yet their business employs little more than 6% of boys under 18, and less than 1% under 13. Footnote, loco citato, 82, page Roman 17, and a footnote. On the same subject, Mr. E. F. Sanderson of the firm of Sanderson Brothers & Co., Steel Rolling Mills and Forges, Attercliffe, says, Great difficulty would be caused by preventing boys under 18 from working at night. The chief would be the increase of costs from employing men instead of boys. I cannot say what this would be, but probably it would not be enough to enable the manufacturers to raise the price of steel, and consequently it would fall on them, as of course the men, what queer-headed folk, would refuse to pay it. Mr. Sanderson does not know how much he pays the children, but— Perhaps the younger boys get from four shillings to eight shillings a week. The boys' work is of a kind for which the strength of the boys is generally, generally, of course not always, quite sufficient, and consequently there would be no gain in the greater strength of the men to counterbalance the loss, or it would be only in the few cases in which the metal is heavy. The men would not like so well not to have boys under them, as men would be less obedient. Besides, boys must begin young to learn the trade. 
leaving day work alone open to boys would not answer this purpose. And why not? Why could not boys learn their handicraft in the daytime? Your reason? Owing to the men working days and nights in alternate weeks, the men would be separated half the time from their boys and would lose half the profit which they make from them. The training which they give to an apprentice is considered as part of the return for the boy's labor and thus enables the man to get it at a cheaper rate. Each man would want half of this profit. In other words, Mr. Sanderson would have to pay part of the wages of the adult men out of their own pockets instead of by the night work of the boys. Mr. Sanderson's profit would thus fall to some extent, and this is the good Sandersonian reason why boys cannot learn their handicraft in the day. Footnote. In our reflecting and reasoning age, a man is not worth much who cannot give a good reason for everything, no matter how bad or how crazy. Everything in the world that has been done wrong has been done wrong for the very best of reasons. Hegel. Logo Citato, page 249. End of footnote. In addition to this, it would throw night labor on those who worked instead of the boys, which they would not be able to stand. The difficulties, in fact, would be so great that they would very likely lead to the giving up of night work altogether, and, as far as the work itself is concerned, says E. F. Sanderson, this would suit as well, but... But Mrs. Sanderson have something else to make besides steel. Steel-making is simply a pretext for surplus-value-making. The smelting furnaces, rolling mills, etc., the buildings, machinery, iron, coal, etc., have something more to do than transform themselves into steel. They are there to absorb surplus labor, and naturally absorb more in twenty-four hours than in twelve. In fact, they give, by grace of God and law, the Sandersons a check on the working time of a certain number of hands for all the twenty-four hours of the day, and they lose their character as capital, and are therefore a pure loss for the Sandersons, as soon as their function of absorbing labor is interrupted. Quote, but then there would be the loss from so much expensive machinery lying idle half the time, and to get through the amount of work which we are able to do on the present system, we should have to double our premises and plant, which would double the outlay. End of quote. But why should these Sandersons pretend to a privilege not enjoyed by the other capitalists who only work during the day, and whose buildings, machinery, raw material, therefore lie idle during the night? E. F. Sanderson answers in the name of all the Sandersons. It is true that there is this loss from machinery lying idle in those manufactories in which work only goes on by day, but the use of furnaces would involve a further loss in our case. If they were kept up, there would be a waste of fuel. Aside, instead of, as now, a waste of the living substance of the workers, back to quote, and if they were not, there would be a loss of time in laying the fires and getting the heat up aside, whilst the loss of sleeping time, even to children of eight, is a gain of working time for the Sanderson tribe. Back to quote. And the furnaces themselves would suffer from the changes of temperature. Aside, whilst those same furnaces suffer nothing from the day and night change of labor. Footnote. Loco Citato, 85, page, Roman 17. To similar tender scruples of the glass manufacturers that regular meal times for the children are impossible because as a consequence a certain quantity of heat radiated by the furnaces would be a pure loss or wasted, Commissioner White makes answer. His answer is unlike that of Yuri, Senior, etc., and their puny German plagiarists a la Rocher who are touched by the abstinence, self-denial, saving of the capitalists in the expenditure of their gold and by their timor termalanish prodigality of human life. A certain amount of heat beyond what is usual at present might also be going to waste if meal times were secured in these cases, but it seems likely not equal in money value to the waste of animal power now going on in glass houses throughout the kingdom from growing boys not having enough quiet time to eat their meals at ease, with a little rest afterwards for digestion. Loco Citato, page Roman 14 and this in the year of progress 1865. Without considering the expenditure of strength in lifting and carrying, such a child, in the sheds where bottle and flint glass are made, walks during the performance of his work fifteen to twenty miles in every six hours. 
and the work often lasts fourteen or fifteen hours. In many of these glass works, as in the Moscow spinning mills, the system of six hours relays is in force. During the working part of the week, six hours is the utmost unbroken period ever attained at any one time for rest, and out of this has to come the time spent in coming and going to and from work, washing, dressing, and meals, leaving a very short period indeed for rest, and none for fresh air and play, unless at the expense of the sleep necessary for young boys, especially at such hot and fatiguing work. Even the short sleep is obviously liable to be broken by a boy having to wake himself if it is night, or by the noise if it is day. Mr. White gives cases where a boy worked thirty-six consecutive hours, others where boys of twelve drudged on until two in the morning and then slept in the works till five a.m., three hours, only to resume their work. The amount of work, say Tremenhere and Tufnell, who drafted the general report, done by boys, youths, girls, and women, in the course of their daily or nightly spell of labor, is certainly extraordinary. Loco citato, Roman 43 and 44. Meanwhile, late by night, self-denying Mr. Glass Capital, primed with port wine, reels out of his club homeward, droning out idiotically, Britons never, never shall be slaves. End of Part 3, Chapter 10, Section 4